Well, it's 6 o'clock, and I'd like to open the February 25th, 2019 Woodbury Select Board meeting. And we have agenda in front of us. And are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, I just had one. I don't know if there are any updates for the, the old store. There so are. There were some yes, like the, there are. Okay, so yeah. I'd like to add that. Probably. Um, and I don't know if we want to work on other appointments at all. Um, well, I have it as part yeah, of the yeah, agenda. Yeah. Zoning Board of Adjustment, Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. We could go through and maybe review some of the others too. Yeah. If we think we have time. <clears throat> yeah. I'd like to okay. do that at the end at of the, the end. meeting okay. because right. from 6.30 p.m. on, we have the school board School here. board stuff, yeah. And that's going to take up a lot of our time, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I'd rather get those folks in and out as quickly as possible mm -hmm. because of the, the weather outside is pretty, right. pretty crummy. Yep. Okay. Is that all, Michael? That's it. Yep. Ryan? Nothing. Okay. So I just have that um, part of the town clerk's report. I was going to talk about the contract with Blue Mountain Ex Excavation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the, uh, the company who won the bid for demolishing the building. Country store. Okay. <clears throat> Since there are no members of the public here, then there can't be any public comments. I had one comment I'll make there. Uh, okay. Carolyn Stewart was involved in an accident on Cabot Road with Russell Richardson, and uh, there was some something said about the road not being wide enough. And Carolyn called me today and said, I just want you guys to know that, as far as I'm concerned, there was plenty of room there. Mm -hmm. So she just, okay. so I didn't know if we'd get any complaints about the width of the road or not. I haven't. Okay. I'm so my phone so she thought working. that somebody might be <clears throat> complaining about the width really? of the road. And that road seems plenty wide compared to some of the others, but. <laughs> you know, Blake Hill Road is wider than I've ever seen it. Really? Yeah. yeah. So they've been out with the grader then? Or? They've been out with that uh, well, the low the pro, low pro with the uh, wing on it. Yeah, yeah that's that was pushing back. Yeah, that was yeah. a whole part of the reason for wanting to yeah. have that truck. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. a great truck. Yeah. Well, if we can only get rid of the 550, <laughs> it'd be a nicer truck. Down. Down. <laughs> well, they had the greater out last week too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have it road. Pete, Pete was having a good time. Yeah, he was that. getting a greater lesson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Peter was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> I think Greg, Greg was in tow, but um, but yeah, he was getting a. A lesson on the greeter. Well, that's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So next on the agenda is to approve the bills to the town. Uh, I'd like to introduce a motion that we do approve the bills to the town. Mm -hmm. Any seconds? I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next up is approve the minutes from the previous select board meeting. Michael, you have the minutes there? I do here. I yeah. did. I did read through them, yeah, and, and I just made. Yeah, I made. I, I noted the issues. corrections, um, and um, and then Diana had a suggestion too, which I also added. Um, okay, yeah, in the front, yeah, I yeah, saw that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, if all are agreed. I'll introduce a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from when was that? February eleventh. Yeah, it seems like a long time ago. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Is second. A second? Okay. Discussion? Further? Right. Did you make that call, Michael, about the Board of Adjustment? Or do you want me to For call? For Mike? Yeah. Oh, no, I did make a call. Okay. I, I sent you, I think I sent you an email about that, but... All in favor, then? Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Meeting minutes passed. Do you want to sign those? Sure. <coughs> so we can give them to so. Diana. <coughs> Excuse me. So since Brandy's on vacation, there won't be a uh, treasurer's report tonight, but she did um, give us copies of the general ledger, and everything seems in order mm -hmm. from our last meeting. Why don't I take this? All right, I should put a, a date thing on there. Sure. 
All right, appointments. I have my newly minted town report here somewhere. Me too. So I guess we've made people will vote. By, well, by massaging the checklist, I probably oh, okay. did a better, better right. job this year because I not only sorted by name but sorted by address, and mm -hmm. and then the people at L Brown did some more sorting. Oh, really? And, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and they checked with me before they finalized it. So. All right. So, Michael, do you want to lead this? Well, Diana was doing the calling, so... Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I didn't realize you were going to do all the appointments. I suggested that you put this on here because well, there should be, there might be a Board of Adjustment hearing within the next month or two. Okay. And we're short of... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm of glad with, just to do those, but I, I would like to kind of know where you're at and calling. to do with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's the reason that we have done the letter the last couple of years is yep. to try to have this mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. set up right. mm -hmm. before town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't. Make, you won't make the appointments until after town meeting. Right. right. But we would know who and what and. and um, yeah, I think Kim was one that was going to be called and. There. Okay, so we're not going to do any tonight. Ones. Then we're going to do okay. some more research on find out. Make well, yeah, we I didn't, I didn't, there aren't even that many to call. There's we can do them. a couple. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one for the conservation commission um, that we could do. Um, we have another person that would like to be on it, and we have the zoning board of adjustment. Right. And um, uh, let's see. Why don't we start with the road form? Okay, that, that's a question. <coughs> do we do we have to appoint? I mean, basically, he's a town employee as the road foreman. So, it, I was I was just wondering why we appoint. We could. That's we always we've always we've always, always done it. it. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just wondered if, if that would be tough to miss. Well, so I did fine. Yeah. Different policy. Sure Plus, that, in another week, you're going to have a new board. So that's another reason for waiting until after. Right. The, the reason that we did the letters before is so that we would right. have names all set up so the very right. first meeting right. after the right. town meeting, we, realize that, but we could just yeah. go through and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there right. a, is there a way we can get those letters out? We're not going to do letters. Look, oh. we'll do the phone call. <coughs> the letters were to say. I said I was going to do the phone, phone calls, phone call. but there, there really aren't that many besides asking Kim Silk if he wants those two jobs back. Mm -hmm. um, so, road foreman, are we? Sure. I mean, I haven't asked Craig, but I'm sure that <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if he stays, he's gonna. If he's working for us, he wants to be the road yeah. foreman. Okay, mm -hmm. Brian, are you going to be the health officer? No, 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 no. He no, already no. said that. So yeah. that I'm just going to X that. Yeah, X so. Forest fire warden and assistant fire warden. I'm presuming they're they're appointed by the state. Yeah. Um, You're going to contact Kim Silk regarding animal control and yeah. dangerous building. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bracket there. Planning commission. Brian, are you on there? No, he wants to be wants to you be can, off. I was gonna re yeah, retire from that one okay. too. Yeah. So I'd like to jump on that. Okay. Would All you right. like to be appointed right now? If you, if you or should we wait? I guess we should wait. But so Yeah, um, wait till the new board is right. constructed. Okay, so I'm just gonna write a note that you're waiting in line. <laughs> or a four-year term. We, we did Nobody talk about it. At, given the four-year term. Right. We, we, I did talk about it with Aaron and Vale last time, and, mm -hmm. and they were happy to know that you were coming on. So. Mm -hmm. so I guess. So, so the, Aaron actually was he actually appointed? Yes. In a official. meeting. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Was, yeah. Board yeah. meeting. Okay. He was came to a planning commission meeting, right. and the planning yeah. commission like him. advised the. Select board to appoint him. Mm -hmm. okay. So will that be then the four year 2023 then for me? I think so. Okay. Right? Yeah. 
zoning administrator. So we'll have to talk to Bob Martin, so we need to check with him too. Zoning Board of Adjustment. So Rick Cannon said that he would accept another and, term. Okay. And Mike Leblin did also. Okay. So there we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. So those should should get a letter of appointment now yep. because mm -hmm. like I said, Look there might that. be something coming up. What's that? That's a pen that somebody gave me. That writes in Well, actually, no. Well, I guess it does help you write in the dark. Yeah. Got a headlight on it. Yeah. <coughs> cool. Should we appoint them tonight, or because you were worried you about... Should, yeah, that's what I meant. They, okay. they should get a letter that they've been appointed. Okay. So do we want to... Make a motion? Make a motion. Oh, Yeah. I'd like to then introduce a motion that... Rick Cannon and Mike McGlynn get appointed to three-year terms mm -hmm. for the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Now, should there, since they weren't, they expired last year, but there hasn't been any activity in the past year, so they were just were reappointed. Mm -hmm. So do you want their term to be three years from 2018 or three years from now? No. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Conservation Commission. So we could wait on this, but um, Andy Rosen met with the Conservation Commission last week. Um, she had sent uh, mm -hmm. contact to the Commission about being interested in serving on the Conservation Commission. Um, Is somebody getting off? Because these are 2021. No, yeah, um, this will be a, a new person. Um, be an, th person. You can have three to seven people on the... Uh, okay. And I'm you know, sort of ex officio um, because I'm a select board member, uh, even though it doesn't say that in the state statutes. And mm -hmm. Susan Sawyer um, isn't able to come to m any of the meetings, really. She's mm. sort of advisory. But, um, but and Andy would be a good, good addition. Yeah, she right. used to be a state um, bug person. So, she's an entomologist. entomologist. Make a motion. Uh, Sure. So you got um, an entomologist and a herpetologist. I, and, uh, as and as uh, a conservation commission a doctor, member, um, Dr. Walters. You know, we met with Andy Rosen. Met with us um, at our last our meeting mm -hmm. last week and expressed an interest to be on the conservation commission. Um, the conservation commission is more than happy to have her um, on board with us. So I would make a motion that we appoint um, Andy Rosen to the Conservation Commission for, I think it's a three-year term? Four years. Is it term. a four-year term? Four years. Mm -hmm. yeah. so All second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Michael Euro for the Center of the Vermont Regional Planning Yeah, I'm happy to, to do that again. Transportation Advisory. Yeah, we haven't had anyone Wow, on that for a long time. What do they advise on? They actually advise on fixing roads and stuff, road projects. Oh, um, goodness. Might be a good way to get Route 14 yeah. from here to East Callis fixed. Really? <laughs> I heard something about the uh, select board chair from Marshfield, I think. And it made it to the, to the Channel 3 News. Uh -huh. Called VTrans and said, you know, when are you going to pay Route 2 between Marshfield yeah. and Danville. Uh -huh. And they said, well, no, maybe five years. <laughs> maybe, maybe in 2020, <laughs> only if the money's there. Uh -huh. But they are authorized mm -hmm. to fix the potholes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what the Transportation Advisory Committee does is they look at VTRAN's list of things and they somehow help them to prioritize. I don't know if V-Trans listens to what they do. Yeah, absolutely but. not. No dealings with V-Trans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is they, you know, they, they'll listen, but uh, that's mm -hmm. about it. So I wonder if Jane knows Lorendo. Should be another one. I'll contact her. I'm pretty sure. I mean, her husband had a fall. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he smacked his head pretty good. Ooh. So she might be. First Constable, Brian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that will remain vacant. Energy coordinator? Coordinator. Co coordinator, yeah. I'll, I'll hang in there on okay. that one. Good <laughs> Assistant Town Clerk, well, that's up to you, too. That's right. Town Treasurer, too. Yeah. Assistant Town Treasurer. <clears throat> so um, I am willing to be the emergency management director. Um, really? 
right. for the interim here. Um, I was thinking Paul Schrute might be a good one. Yeah, let's well. see if Paul is interested. Well, I, 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 had, wounded a fire department. I had thought of either um, Paul or um, his Chance son Payette. or Chance Payette. Yeah, but yeah, for the moment, guys. for the moment, let's wait until after town meeting. But mm -hmm. I went to the uh, there was a seminar for the local mm -hmm. emergency management plan last Friday that I went to, and mm -hmm. um, so just, I've been kind of keeping up on um, that and the local hazard mm -hmm. mitigation plan. So uh, I could fill in for there um, if no one else wants to do it. Let's see what... Yeah, I thought about I thought about those going myself just because I know that they've done all the schools, all the training, sure, they're they, mm -hmm. they just right. right there with it. Yep. So yep, they are. If they would take on if something else or not. Yeah. Right. Maybe Roy or one of them who's not... Roy wouldn't. No? <laughs> no, I don't think he would. No? <laughs> just as an aside, yeah. the, uh, the work we did on the Local emergency management plan. Yeah. Uh, the uh, work we did. The local hazard mitigation, mitigation plan. plan. There's oh. so many plans up there. <laughs> uh, our in kind match exceeded the, the amount that mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. were required to do. So I sent that information into Stephanie Smith. Yeah. So, however, they're going to adjust. Right. However, right. they do that. Yep. It's out of our hands, mm -hmm. but we did exceed mm -hmm. uh, the requirements, yep. which is good. Yep. Yep. And and I believe the regional planning commission is going to send us a bill. Yeah, did they already send us an invoice? Seems like I. I well, I signed the contract a couple yeah, of weeks ago. Okay, maybe that was. For yeah, us. and uh, for something coming we'll up. wait for for modern emergency management to send us the check, or right. actually FEMA is going to send us the mm -hmm. check. I believe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it'll be just a pass through right. to the regional mm -hmm. planning commission. Yeah. I did ask at this seminar last Friday, what is the difference between the local hazard mitigation plan and the local emergency management plan? And the local hazard mitigation plan is more kind of federal FEMA oriented and, and it's pretty much um, anticipating things that might happen and trying to, to mitigate, you know, trying to make changes to lessen those possibilities. And the local emergency management plan is for dealing with something that does happen, right? So, and it's more a state kind of thing. But you, both of them help you get more money. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. If you have them done. So. E nine one one coordinator. Sure. Mm -hmm. Tree warden. I don't know. I'll have to ask. Let me check with. You know he's going to say yes. <laughs> no, I don't know. The way he was abused last year. <laughs> last <laughs> month, rather. By whom? <laughs> not by us. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. Pound keeper, yeah. Mr. Silk. Yeah. But, yeah, I'd like to go back to the other page for a minute. Okay. Dangerous buildings officer. Now, I don't know how many of you, how far back your memory goes, Michael, but the last, I think the last time this dangerous building ordinance was used at all, the lawyer said it wasn't worth anything. Well, um, it was worth, it was worth something. Um, Kim Silk and I made some changes in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, but I don't think it was any updated? of it. updated? It was, yeah, we made the changes. Um, and then we haven't really used it, so. Okay. Well, I was just thinking if it, if it was defunct and um, still is not not, <coughs> uh, me. not valid yeah, according to our attorney, then maybe you could stop appointing someone. But you know, if you think it's still valid, then mm -hmm. leave it. Yeah, I would. I would. I, would I mean, it's. Well, didn't we try to do it at one hearing, and the uh, gentleman who came to represent the town wasn't really. In tune, that was our, yeah. yeah, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the judge just threw it out. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the one happen. where they, when they uh, hired an attorney, and he said no on buildings. I mean, an engineer. No, the the engineer said that, you know, the reason for the court case that it was a dire emergency, and the engineer <coughs> kind of contradicted that a little right. bit. Um, and then, and then whether the ordinance really, you know, applied to it, that was what the judge, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so. It'll give Kim something to do. Mm -hmm. right. But it does still exist. Okay. Thank you. Woodbury Fund Committee. 
Um, it's a lot of folks that explore. Yeah, that's pretty much every year, and I, I don't know how much Peter is going to want to chase folks down. Um, maybe usually, Robin would be willing to do that. Um, he usually just says that the, you know he usually checks. With he usually people. checks with everybody. Yeah. So. Um, I don't think much. Okay. Twenty nineteen. Everybody. Yeah. So you got to. There and the rail trail too, same, same yeah. thing. Frank can chase them down. Yeah. Yep. Have your secretary do it. Have my secretary call. <laughs> <laughs> How many meetings have they had? <clears throat> <laughs> that'd, be so, that'd be interesting. Get that thing going. Okay, good. That's that. <coughs> Which you've got run off. She's up. Still. Yeah, then she. Alright, so we got through that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So let's. Next on the agenda is the Tom Clerks report. And uh, there's an adjustment to the agenda I added the contract with Blue Mountain Excavation. That's for you. No, oh. that's not for you. No. That's for you. This one might be for you. It's got my name on it. It does. So it must be for you. I know that's for you. So if we can recall that Blue Mountain Excavation was a low bidder on the project. And so now it's just coming to, you know, terms and conditions of the contract. Mm -hmm. So I did have a conversation with Jeremy Bogey. And he and I swapped the draft contract back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you look on the second page of your document, it says one of one of the one of the hang-ups was, you know, how does he want to get paid, or how do we want to pay him? Mm -hmm. So he he would prefer to get forty percent of the <clears throat> of the uh, bid cost. Mm -hmm. Right up front, up front, so he can pay cat amount uh, environmental to get rid of the asbestos, mm -hmm. and then the sixty percent on completion. Yeah, know. wouldn't even pay all of cat amount. But yeah, but that would it, yeah. that would get them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that would give them some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and then when you anticipate a start date, mm -hmm. so I sent him this email saying that you know there's a lot of things up in the air in terms mm -hmm. of the start date. The moving target due to the details that remain to be addressed, such as the town purchasing the property. Once that happens, we can move forward. And so I just cut and paste the R mm -hmm. RFP timeline. And I think one of the key dates here is March 21st. It would be contract execution. Mm -hmm. So there would be a formally executed contact contract with Blue Mountain. And then on and on and on. Are you still going to be um, willing to um, honcho that? To honcho that? Yes, to be the man. To honcho that? The man. The man. Yeah. The man. yeah. Who uh, shall manages I, the contract. Shall I send you a proposal? No. Okay, sure. <laughs> well, if they, if they will appoint you to um, manage that project as, uh, for another month beyond your. Well, he can do it as a resident too. Yeah. Have to be That's a what I mean. Yeah. But still, you know, yeah, he could still he needs your authority. Yeah. Right. He could do it as a resident. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so do we have to go get a loan for this, or? Yes. Okay. We, we get our FEMA award. We we'll get reimbursed. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's all reimbursement. Yeah. 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 So we'll take the loan for hopefully a lot less than a year. Well, yeah. It says in this, and this is a pretty aggressive schedule. Mm -hmm. Indicates that. Complete demolition and site grading no later than July 3rd, 2019. Mm -hmm. You know, if that happens, mm -hmm. that would be really nice exceptional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. That's, that's so, yeah. notice yeah. to proceed with the demolition is May 8th. <clears throat> so, so the snow is gone by May 8th. <laughs> but would we want to start um, if we haven't heard from FEMA about they're actually going to award us no, the grant? No, no, no we no. can't. We got to get their sign off and we have to uh, 
take that to the bank and we have to have a closing and I've given the attorney right. the go ahead to start the site, start the title search. Yeah. And now uh, we need to have that done. The, um, Lauren told us that two things that they need is the clean site letter and a clean title. So, plus so, an amendment application. Right, so we have the clean site letter. Yep. So they still need that before they're even going to start considering right. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you send the amendment application? <coughs> no. They sent it to Lauren because okay. she wanted to look over it and uh, make some comments. And she did. And um, she asked for more detail. I mean, we didn't have any detail on any of our bids, amounts that we, not bid, but estimates that we put in the first time around. Right. But this time she said she... I got some numbers from Dana mm -hmm. Gravel because he did that culvert on Cabot Road, so he's kind of familiar with that stream and, and he's done a lot of this kind of work. And since I wasn't hearing anything back from Don Marsh, I asked Dana to give me up. Sure, yeah. So he sort of just ran through some numbers in his head and thought that it would probably be like a low of 15000 and a high of 30000 For the restoration of the stream. Yeah. And I, then I put in $5,000 for the engineer. Well, today I got this back. Oh, my God. Well, no, is that a nasty yeah. thing? Yeah. Well, this is from Don. <laughs> this is his... Don Marsh. Yeah, he's saying that he, I suggest you carry fifty to 75000 for the stream restoration work. And then, these are the details on the engineering part of it. I mean, you don't know. <laughs> we should have... <laughs> this is... Uh, well, like he said in his email, it seems high, but you have to go through the same hoops for a small project as you do for a large project. At least that's what he's listening. Permits and stuff. <laughs> that's a crazy amount of money. So I have like twenty six seven thousand dollars just just before we even start. So at least now I have something to give to Lauren in writing. So this and is just for the engineering. Yeah. These two pages are just all the, so I mean, it's, um, doing all the, mm -hmm. the RFP and things like that. His engineering cost is $27,000 for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Permit applications, 397. Well, I don't know what permit you would need. I don't think you need a permit. Well, if you're mucking around with a screw. Yeah, but they just come in and they tell us how to do it, and you do it that way. I don't think you need a you need a stream alteration permit if you're altering a stream, if you're really moving a stream. Right. But I don't think you need one just to restore stream banks that are already there. So I noticed Grenier Engineering. I get who that is. Mm. Who are Bear Creek Environmental? Bear Creek Environmental is a stream alteration, stream restoration specialist. Yeah. So she's a subcontractor <laughs> to Don Marsh, who's not an expert in that particular So why do we area? have Don Marsh um, at $125 an hour, and we just rely on their free well. environmental at $85 an hour, mm. and have the cost, and say, thanks, Don, however, let well. us know, take a hike. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Just, to me, it seems redundant because you have Crenier Engineering doing the same stuff mm -hmm. as Bear Creek mm -hmm. Environmental LLC. Mm -hmm. Well, Bear Creek is probably doing it for Crenier. Right, as a sub subcontractor, mm -hmm. so they get a part of a, a cut, probably. Well, yeah. so if see what mm -hmm. I don't understand about this is. Bear Creek Environmental, if they're doing the work, mm -hmm. why is Don Grenier charging us more? He's got, more the, P. He's he's got, got the, the PE. P. That's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> well, we have some of that stuff. But. Yeah, that's why you get gold too. So. 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 Are you going to amend the amendment? Yeah. <laughs> I was under this. I said, you want more details? Here's lots of details. Yeah. Is that okay, okay. or not? Yeah, I guess it is, but um. But it's still going to pump up our twenty-five percent. Right. Yeah. So twenty-five percent of yeah, fifty thousand dollars yeah. is what twelve thousand five hundred dollars, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So yeah. add on to the add it on to the fourteen thousand that mm -hmm. we're at. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, like he said, it probably will be. He said, I expect the actual cost will be much lower. 
And Dana Gravel probably has a little bit better handle on actual cost because he is a contractor and he does run heavy equipment and sell stones and all that stuff. So. But why do we, you know, before you do that, I know I'm just a short time here. Can you ask him why the redundancy in work? Because if you just look at, I can see why they might want Bear mm -hmm. Creek to come out to a meeting. Mm -hmm. But Topo Survey Stream, you know, he's getting mm -hmm. you know, 4093 dollars of that four thousand ninety three dollars. Bear Creek Environmental is doing like two thousand of it. Mm -hmm. And Grenier Engineering is doing two thousand of it too. So so you're talking about item two, total yeah. survey and yeah, screen two. characterization. Yeah. Excuse me, yeah. Mm. Conceptual plan. It, it so appears as though you're right that he's relying on Bear Creek Environmental mm -hmm. to do the actual work. But I don't know if she, I don't know if she does the actual like I mean she I don't I don't know who does the actual like mapping kind of thing. Well I don't think they, that the engineering firm would do that, but uh, I don't know. To me, it's just an exorbitant mm -hmm, amount of money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the the Kingsbury Basin plan, that oh. design thing. That was, you know, it's, it's sort of the same thing. It's about the same amount of money too. No. Oh. Just tell him it's Woodbury. They know mm. it's Woodbury. You know. Well, when I hired him, I mean, he was a one-man firm. I know. Now he's and now he's a big, with the biggest and best engineering firm in Washington County. So, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know whether his price went up at the same time. <laughs> or <laughs> they do. Yeah. Have that grant yeah. that we're going to do for over behind the fire station for that water. Well, yeah, they move that across the road to the right store. Right, yeah. <laughs> Use that grant for that one yeah. over there. Yeah. Designing that. Uh, yeah, we only have a ten percent match on that. Yeah. One. yeah. <laughs> and it's not like it's gonna. I mean, the stream is where it is, and unless yeah, just put banks in. unless she right. she talks, uh, unless this uh, Bear Creek environmental lady Mary, I think her name mm -hmm. is. Um, Unless she suggests moving it somehow, but that doesn't to, make any sense. We're not trying to reroute the Lamoille. Yeah, yeah, right. No, we don't want to reroute it because then it won't line up with it. Exactly. That. So <laughs> then it would, yeah, that would affect the whole probably have a road cruise speed of the water <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> no, yeah. We have the equipment. We got the guy, I mean, they could flatten it out. It's, I don't know. Or just it's not going to need a whole lot of... will come out for a day's work and do it. We still need all the permits. We do, but... Mm -hmm. Just can you check? Yeah, I'll ask for an explanation. Please. You guys have the draft contract. Mm -hmm. So, what I'd like to do is write back to uh, Jeremy Bogey tomorrow mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. say we're okay with the stipulation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he yeah, get forty percent before the project starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing is if he's okay with. Waiting until we know. That's he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. talking with him. He's he knows fine. that it might. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He understands the project is in, mm -hmm. in FEMA's hands. Really. Okay. Good. It's okay. I'll talk to him, mm -hmm. and I'll send. <clears throat> excuse me. I'll send out an edited contract tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys to look at. Then if everything is cool, I'm going to buy Paul Gillies mm -hmm. just once more, and then it's done. Mm -hmm. Did Lauren Oates have any sense of you know, when she gets the clean site letter and the clean title, how long? No. Well, um, she did say, one thing she did say was that because this is from a pot of money from Hurricane Irene, that the FEMA people in Boston are very anxious to get it closed out. Oh, that's, so that's, that's where the money's going? Oh. Yeah. So it's not like it's... They're the, you know, they're the regional office. Yeah, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> next on the agenda is pre-town meeting meeting. Pre-town meeting. I have, to, I have to figure out how to get into the building. Otherwise, this sort of runs itself. Steve will be there. This is 6.30. Into yeah, the, the library. Into the community room. Right. What time? Six, six oh, we have a library Thursday. Right there, so. Yes, sir. Yeah. You want to come? <clears throat> you want to open?
You want to open the room for them? Yeah, they have it open. Okay, great. Yeah. What time? 6.30? Well, well, they get there a little early? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. This Thursday, 6.30. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's town meeting. Right, so town meeting. Yeah. We're all set with PA system, right? Well, no. What? Well, <laughs> the first person I asked, and Gagnons don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Somebody suggested I call Robin Grant, so I called Robin Grant last week and he said he'd get back to me by Friday, but he didn't, so I called today and he said he doesn't think it's a problem, he thinks he has enough equipment, but... You could try a book spiel or a Montpelier. The, yeah, they're the last resort, no. yeah, because then somebody would have to go pick it up well, and I could know how to set it up and all that stuff, so... I work in yeah. Montpelier on Monday, Yeah. so... So that's, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, good. Yeah. So you'll take care of that? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Definitely. You can't have all those. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anybody want an agenda? So we all set with a pre, pre town meeting? I think we are. Okay. In town meeting? You can put that on here, but we can still talk about town meeting. Mm -hmm. Monday, Elliot. If you don't have to go to Buke Spieler, can you. Um, Help me with some tables and yeah. stuff? Or do you, yeah. Oh, you want to do that too? Yeah. Okay, you can do that. Um, maybe usually we leave here about 1 and when the office closes and go to the town hall and pick up the voting booth and some tables and things. What are we voting on? Hayes and budget. So there's just one, we only need one booth and we need some of those stanchion yeah, things yeah, yeah. and okay. some of the folding tables. That's interesting, voting on Hayes and budget after all that's going on. But yeah, but they're still totally separate. So, Although I did hear from the superintendent <coughs> last week, the next, well, there's that reconvened meeting on the 15th, but then there's going to be, uh, oh, she said because of all the uncertainty, she thinks that the uh, we should go ahead and uh, vote on a school budget just for Woodbury. Just in case, so that's going to be she? April. Oh, Joanne, that's going to be April 9th, right? We will not be voting on school budget at town meeting. Right, but she told me last week she wanted to set up a special meeting on April 9th. Did she tell well, you that yet? Well, I told her that we have to proceed with due diligence. Okay. And I don't think it'll take that long, but I'm not going. I don't think the school board will be in favor of rushing the right. budget discussion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like you guys have set the date. We have a meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. We'll spend most of the time on the budget, mm -hmm. and we'll see where we are at the end of that. Mm -hmm. But I think it'll take at least two meetings, mm -hmm. and generally it takes us three. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but if you know, I, I was going to talk about this, of course, later. Right. But yeah, if uh, I don't anticipate any dramatic problems with our budget this year, so I think after a couple of meetings we can come up with a budget and we can set a date. If it's April 15th or April 24th, uh -huh. I still think that's fine. I don't think we're going to find <coughs> ourselves in a situation um, where that won't be sufficient. But that's my take on it. So you would hold a special budget meeting then? You wouldn't do it at a monthly increment like you do your board meetings? No. <laughs> this is something that has to be voted on at an open meeting. But there will be other issues at that same meeting, oh. which, which we'll get to. Oh, okay. Intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there was talk about having a special meeting to vote on what to do with any surplus, right? So that The surplus be... and also the um, whatever decision we want to make around the... Uh, wetland properties. I think it can all be done at the same meeting. We just have to, you know, get organized and prepare ourselves. <coughs> so the voters will get a chance to weigh in on that? That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that. Okay, when we get to okay. next. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, you want help on, on Monday? Yes. Okay. okay. I'll talk to you Monday morning. Or just drop me an email. Okay. Or on Monday. Okay. okay. So okay. let me know about the PA, and, okay. and I I'll, won't be there in the afternoon to help okay. you. If you're gonna be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. All right. Anybody want to do any ballot clerking? Uh, <laughs> maybe. I'm a little short of ballot clerking, but I haven't really reached out yet. So. 
For a town meeting? Yeah. You need ballot for us? For a <coughs> hand vote. Uh, I think we'll be busy. Mm -hmm. Town meeting. Yeah, that's it's true. You wouldn't be able to be, do it like for, from 10 to 2 or whatever, but you know, you could do the evening shift. <laughs> Maybe Patrick wants to do that. <laughs> done it before. He did it before. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. <clears throat> we'll get that managed. Yeah, I can probably do some after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. If okay. you need someone. You doing pizza, Doug? No, we don't no, have a we don't store have to, to get pizza anymore. Right, we don't have to count. We, um, Brian and somebody else will take the ballot box out to Hardwick Elementary and commingle. Commingle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> commingle. Yeah. yeah. Do you commingle the positive pie or do you just. I haven't commingled there yet. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of on the way. <laughs> right next to No, you have to do your own English first and then you go down the middle of the bar. Okay, so okay. drop me a note. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, next on the agenda, we're only 11 minutes late, so we'll try and move right along. Sorry about that. <clears throat> it's Woodbury graded school discussion. And you notice I've changed the name of the school from the Woodbury Elementary School to the Woodbury Graded School because on um, <clears throat> the National Register of Historic Places that's how it's described. <clears throat> so I should introduce folks from the school board, Steve Murphy, Chair Patrick Flood, our librarian Brett Stanchu, and a member of the public, Norm Etkin, who's been part of the conversation regarding school leases, and uh, he's been a great help. So, Patrick, do you have any opening comments? Well, I would like to just comment that, of course, some of you were at the meeting last week, so you got a first-hand experience in how complicated this whole Act 46 thing is. It's unpredictable. Um, it's complicated. There's a lot of strong feelings. Um, so, you know, honestly, we don't know what's going to happen next. And that makes it really difficult to plan. And the budget is an example of that. So we were ass assured this is all going to move forward. We were going to do a single budget. Well, guess what? Here we are. You know, in a very short time frame now, we have to put together a budget, and the town has to have a special meeting, which I think is extremely unfortunate, but that's the world we're in. And we're not, I don't see a clear path here yet myself. I think there's things that we have to do as a town to be prepared, and I think we've all, we've had most of that discussion. I hope we will go through all those items tonight and make sure. We know we are, we're in agreement about next steps and whatnot because I think sure. that's really important. The clock is ticking. I don't sure think, um, like I said about the budget, I don't think it's critical yet. But another example is I haven't heard, you know, the legislature is not in session today. My, the last communication I had about it that was shared with some of us was the Senate Education Committee uh, said that if the judge didn't rule by Friday that they were going to start testimony on the extension this week. So I haven't gone and looked at their schedule yet. I don't know if they're scheduled testimony or discussion tomorrow. If they have, I I'm tempted to go down and listen to some of it, you know. Um, I'm not at all sure where the Senate is, but I think when push comes to shove, the Senate will go along with the extension of Governor will sign it, which will be very, very helpful for all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, but we don't know that yet. Sure. You know, I, I invited Andrew Kirchlich to come yeah. either tonight or tomorrow. I would really love to have him see the confusion that's been created and just yeah. the complexity of this. So that uh, you know, I spent 30 years in public service right. and government. I have never that. dealt with a situation as complicated and, and as far as I'm concerned, as badly organized mm -hmm. as, as the implementation of Act 46. I've never seen anything like it. That was self-inflicted. You know, when, mm -hmm. when Irene came and destroyed, you know, the mental health system and the roads in Vermont, okay, you know, that was tough. But you know what? The response to that was better organized than this, in my opinion. So, 
I'm done with my opening <laughs> remarks because I could go on and on and you don't want to hear it all. <clears throat> I'm sure we could go on and on. Too. <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> from, from the newly minted owners of the Woodland yes, Radio congratulations. School yeah. and lands, all except for the first bullet under our agenda item, which is purchase 14 acres of wetlands, Michael. Mm -hmm. Wetlands, thank you. You're welcome. So. Well, so, I think this, you know, my sense of the school board at this point is that, uh, and we, again, we'll discuss this tomorrow night too, but um, my my prediction is that the, the school board will be happy to, you know, one way or another convey that property to the town so that all the wetlands are one piece of property and we can proceed with some of the plans that the town had, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but exactly what that looks like, I don't know yet. I think uh, one of the questions that has to be researched is what would be acceptable um, to the State Board of Education in terms of a, because there really hasn't been any um, guidance about transfer of assets prior to the uh, Initiation of the joint or the merged district. You right, know, what are, is there a deadline by which we have to get certain things done if we want to do it? Are there rules about what compensation needs to be in place? We have no guidance about that. I'm saying, you know, so I think we, I think we would be well advised to ask our attorneys what they think. If we could transfer, I, assuming the school board is, does want to see the property transferred, if we could transfer it to the town for a dollar. And that will pass muster as you know that would be great mm -hmm. if we I, I think there has to be something tangible that exchanges well, right, hands yeah, right yeah. the way i'm th looking at this is that if we wait for the legislature or if we wait wait for guidance from well, the board of no. education forget about it it's not going to happen or it'll change <laughs> or it'll change so the way i'm looking at it is we should proceed you know in spite of the best efforts by the Board of Education to confuse the subject. We should just, as two bodies, you know, as a school board and a select board, just move forward and do the appropriate title search and come to a dollar amount and just be done with it. I, I think we would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I can't say it till we have our meeting and discussion. Right. But I expect to come out of the meeting tomorrow night with a decision about this. Right. Uh, from my perspective, I would like to talk to our attorney about those two questions I just raised to make sure that we have at least done some due diligence around them. But I'm with you. We should not wait. We should proceed. Mm -hmm. yeah. so and but but I do believe, right? Am I correct that that there still is a decision of the townspeople to make that transfer or not? It's not, it's not solely up to us. It's not really. It's not. I did some digging around the Vermont statute, and the only thing I could find is. Not the conveyance of property by a school district to a town. I just found the opposite: conveyance of town property mm -hmm. and how to go about that. Not only conveyance by, if you want to say, purchase, but also leasing. Okay, so there are two separate. Yep. Within Title 24, there are two separate sections: one regarding sale and one regarding lease. But I could not find anything about conveyance of property from a school district to a town. You know, I searched what's that? Lexus Nexus and the one statute online. Um, I don't want to read it right now, but I'll be happy to read it later and tell you. But again, I <coughs> I don't want to change the subject, but one of the questions we've been uh, kind of going around about is uh, having our own attorney, and I have talked to an attorney who's very experience um, who would be happy to work for the school board um, and tomorrow night we'll be talking about that as well so we can make a decision on that as a board to hire uh, our own attorney and the minute and I'm assuming the board will agree to that too and the minute they do we're going to uh, put some questions in front of that attorney so what this would be one of them you know what do we have to do how quickly can we proceed and if we don't need to make this part of a special town meeting decision, I guess that's fine, fine with me. You know, we can yeah. just, the two bodies can 
consummate the deal. Yeah. Great. Have you Excellent. By Paul Gillies at all, or no? No, I don't know. But I think well, when we when we uh, we as soon as we ask our attorney to work on it, I would ask that attorney to immediately get to work to contact Attorney Gillies, yeah. Yeah. and I think they could knock that off in a matter of days, you know, hours, a couple hours of work. Old. Yeah. So we we could be in business before even before your next meeting potentially. To uh, have something in writing to guide us, you know, how to proceed and so start. You guys will talk about this at your meeting yes. tomorrow night, then. and make a decision <laughs> to whether decision. to hire an attorney or not. But I think we're going to choose to do that. Okay. And the last bullet on on our uh, agenda item is a town meeting school discussion. So we'll bring all of this stuff up. Yes. During town meeting, just to let the folks know what's going on and yes. how we're proceeding. That's my goal, and you know, I talked to Steve Freyhoffner. <clears throat> just yesterday about this because we don't have really any articles of any substance uh, on the school <coughs> meeting. It really is just going to be an open discussion. Here's where we are. Here are the issues that need to be resolved. Here's our plan. Uh, and then get feedback from the town. I think that's really, really important to get. Um, so I said to Steve, you know, last year, if some of you remember, he had to keep jumping up and getting permission for me to keep talking you know, <laughs> because of the rules of the meeting. I yeah. said, you know, maybe you could just ask in the beginning that we just construct the meeting as a discussion and, and uh, I'll, you know, board members will be up in front, etc. We'll just go, we'll be very organized and we'll go through the issues and take all questions and uh, take all suggestions. Wow. All Great. questions. <laughs> Yay, my advice is we stay there until nobody has any more questions. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's yeah. Um, so do you want to you touch on some of these other bullets? Sure. Uh, next bullet is lease of town-owned school buildings <laughs> to the Woodbury Elementary School District. So when I talk to the attorney that we're likely to engage <coughs> about this, um, he was ready to go to work immediately. In fact, he was hoping that the that the town attorney had already drafted something that he could look at ASAP. There it is. Okay. So then uh, uh, Wednesday morning, we'll be ready to share that with him. Thank you, Michael. And um, and he will work with your attorney immediately. Um, and I, you know, I, I I trust them to deal with all the the the, the legal aspects of it. I think what's really, really important for all of us is to make sure that all the substantive issues about what should be touched on, what should be included, are all there. You know, I know Brett has concerns about how the library building is um, handled in this, so that's just one example. Um, and I don't know, for example, even if we transfer the, the wetland, is there any reason to talk about the wetland in there because we've had interest in the past about joint town school projects on the web. It's just a question. I'm, not, I'm just suggesting that those things, we want to make sure they're brought up and discussed. Yeah, okay. So we're all on the same way. We are. Yeah. And if I can skip down to, uh, there was a, something that Steve wanted to put in. If I can just skip down a bullet to the community library memorandum of understanding. Yeah. And I took a note. And to me, that memorandum of understanding should be incorporated into the lease either by reference or the full document as an addendum. Mm. You know, just so we cover that base. So I don't know if that would be up to an attorney to decide whether doing it by reference is applicable or acceptable or if we want to. I'd be cautious about attaching it because it gives it a heightened. Uh, formality that heretofore we've been able to just discuss and agree and sign something. So if you did it by reference, if the school board and the library board yep. agreed on a change, it would be fine yep. because it's included by reference. So, but how to, you, you, I get your point. Yes, how, they do, how do you make sure that it, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So I just want to be sure that Brett's okay with that and it will be included again either by reference or an addendum, whatever the attorneys feel is, is the best way to do it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, looking at your third bullet here, this, this to me is one of the uh, big issues, which is 
So we may agree on what a lease should look like uh, and what's included in etc. But then we have to, if if that, if if our plan is that that becomes the lease with the with the new merged district, then I think we have to feel comfortable that it's going to pass muster when the time comes. Well, it may not. <laughs> It probably won't. <laughs> now your feelings are that it need they may want the school, so you want to make sure that they can use the school for the kids. No, my feeling know. is my belief, based on any, all the conversations we've had to date, is that um, a lease should suffice as a and it's an encumbrance on the property, as it's referred to in the articles from the state, right? It talks about all encumbrances and whatnot are, are included in any transfers. Sure. Yeah. So, of course, <laughs> this is why I want an attorney, but um, I assume that we will put a lease in place or agree, lease agreement between us that when the merger happens, that lease will simply be transferred. That will become the agreement with the, with the OSSU yeah. or, or with the new merged district. But I want to make sure that that's going to be the case, and there there may be some question about whether a lease suffices or not. I don't think there's any question. But well, the lawyer from the OSSU basically said that if there's a lease, okay, they, 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 they don't want the school at all. This is that the same. lawyer said that. Yeah, Sean yes. Tui. Yeah. Well, my point exactly. <laughs> I don't think I Just knew that, but as a lease. Oh yeah, there was a, an email that Julian. Oh, the early thing. Yeah, you know, around the holidays. I think. Well, I can tell you that the attorney we're discussing, talking with, and discussing having work for us. Uh, believes just the opposite. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's clearly that's just the opposite. Yeah. So. Can, can you explain that? That. What, that the new union district would be required to honor a lease yes. that we so, sign between the town and the Woodbury yes. School District. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. that's my belief. That would be yeah. wonderful. For what term? Mm -hmm. ah, that's well, that's a good question, but it seems I, to me I, forever, as long as the lease, as long as the, as long as the lease was legitimate when it was signed, it's an encumbrance and it stays with the property. Mm -hmm. it's an but I don't know. It's an asset of the property. Yeah, please feel free to join in. Norm's done more work on this than I have, so. <laughs> well, I'm Emily Simmons at the General Council at the Agency of Ed. Um, said about half of the unified districts include some lease buildings, so it's not really that unique. So it's, um, so, but it, it, it's, again, us talking is kind of meaningless. It's the attorney that needs right, to right. figure we this to, out. I, I think we have to move with some speed, just in case the legislature hunts and we have a July 1st deadline. Well, what we don't know, not to change the subject again, is even if the legislature extends the deadline for the actual yeah. merger, they may put different dates in there for by the, what time we have to have this, that, and sure. the other thing in place. It doesn't necessarily give us nine months to do whatever we want. I don't, that we don't know. But I, I think we're all in agreement again here that the sooner we have a lease that we agree on, and then we take that lease to the OSSU attorneys and we hash it out. That's got to happen pretty soon. And we may have to involve the state uh, board. I don't know, but I, I don't want to assume we've got a lease and then find out eight months from now. Well, to me, there are two, almost two different documents. There's a lease between two agreeable parties here. Okay. Then there will be a, a separate lease or perhaps an addendum to our lease signed by the OSSU or, or the new form dis forming district with different stipulations like, you know, length of the lease, terms of the lease. What I'm fearing is that if we get the OSSU attorneys involved and they start batting around our lease, the lease between the town and the school board, that they're just going to delay and delay, delay, delay. So I, well, I, I well, just... maybe. I, I... In general, I think it's better to find out early as possible what you're up against in terms of resistance or objection. 
And we, I, you, the, your attorney and our the attorney we're talking about hiring are both extremely experienced, knowledgeable sure. attorneys around municipal matters and whatnot. So I think if they if, if they say we're on firm footing, I think we're on firm footing. But I just assume know as soon as possible what we might be up against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's consider this: the we should we should make the terms of the lease agreeable to the new union districts so they would be inclined to honor it over a longer term. What we would not want to do is sign a lease that they may be required to accept or honor for a certain term, but it would be a burden to them and then they would seek to close our school because the terms <coughs> of the lease aren't favorable. And we did, I'll, I'll just say this, at a, at a meeting of the amendment committee we talked generally about a terms of a lease that would be agreeable to the, the members of that committee. And the terms were, we discussed them here before and at one of our school board meetings, that the new union district would lease the building mm -hmm. for a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. The new union district would be responsible for essentially the operation of the building, for um, providing school and, say, during school hours. And then the owner of the building, the town, would be responsible for capital improvements. So those were the, the broad terms of the, sure. the agreement there. And, and I wonder, is there, what is the, what is the sense in this room? I, I have a question about term. how autonomous is the new union district from the supervisory union? Is, is it one and the same thing? Because I don't see a lot of support coming <coughs> from the supervisory union for the confusion that we're trying to deal with as far as, I mean, that lawyer basically said if there was a lease encumbrance with the school that they wouldn't want to deal with the school at all, they would just shut it down. That's pretty much what he said. Well, my, my interpretation of that was that he wasn't assuming that the, the district would do something. I think he was mm -hmm. talking about more about rights, the rights that would be surrendered, the rights that would be forfeited if we didn't convey the property. Mm -hmm. Because the Articles of Agreement don't address leasing. Mm -hmm. They do address conveyance, and if we were to convey the property, <coughs> we would have certain, certain rights. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't convey, then there, that creates a lot of uncertainty, and this, the new Union District would not be required. Mm -hmm. Would not be required to operate the building. But to, 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 an, to try to answer your question, Michael, mm -hmm. my experience tells me that um, you know school districts have a fair amount of autonomy in their decision making from the OSSU, mm -hmm. but in reality, we're dependent on them for our financial management, for our you know a variety of things. So it's a kind of a tangled relationship. You don't have that much real. When it comes to big questions like this, I'm not sure. But we, like we make, we do our own budget. We vote on our own budget, for example. We hire. But anyway. Um, so, but this is, Jill. Let's just let me give you a couple of complications here. Number one, we're going to have a new superintendent sometime. We assume we're doing interviews on super for new superintendent like in a couple of weeks. So that's one complicated. You, you don't know what you're going to have to bring the new superintendent completely along, right? The other issue, which I think is actually more complicated than a sticky wicket, is the articles. Because the article, the period for changing the articles that came from the state, <coughs> at least everything we've seen in writing so far, ended on the 28th of February. So we're stuck right now with the default articles. None of us like that. So we're looking to the legislative decision, I hope, when they say we're going to, if, if they do agree to move this, or extend it a year, that they're also going to say, well, the decision around articles is also extended. Because as Stephen's done a lot of work on this, and there's, there's some negotiation going on within the districts about you know, what those articles should look like. And that can determine a lot about things like how a lease would be managed. So you got new superintendent, you got new rules, maybe, maybe not. So how do you, you know. 
Jesus now, those articles could be amended still, still, but under the statute, not under the provisions but in Act only, 46. Only by the new board. The and new only board. if the new board brings them to the, the, the voters. So we don't have a new board yet. We don't know when we're going to have a new board. We're going to probably be living with the so-called transitional board for most of the coming year, but we don't know that yet. I just want to add, alternatively, I believe that the electorate could, by petition, by bring that to the board. But again, there is no board to do it. Right. So there is no mechanism presently to amend exactly. those Exactly. Exactly. I just want to say this. Uh, regarding the lease, okay, optimistically, but also realistically, leasing Woodbury graded school to the new Union District could be in the best interest of everybody. The town would get to retain ownership of the building, and the, under a leasing agreement, it may be less of a financial burden on the new district. So this may work in everybody's favor. Mm -hmm. Right, but the uh, taxpayers in Woodbury would still bear the cost of any capital improvements yeah. or running, you know, just keeping the lights on. But wouldn't that be the cost of ownership of any property? It, it sure would be. Yeah. So we would have to define the cost of educating the children and also define the cost of operating the school. Yeah. You know, the, the physical mm -hmm. plant keeping it, keeping the lights and heat on and all that and the stuff. benefit of keeping ownership. Yeah. Yeah. But so if I can, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we can do that. We can look right. at the budget and mm -hmm. see how much uh, the budget, you know, gave to operating the building, reserve funds, anything like that, and try and take away that from the actual cost of educating children. That should be a simple, you know, just an Excel spreadsheet and you're done. So if I can read from Sean Tui's uh, email to Joanne LeBlanc. And I'll just paraphrase this here. If the Woodbury School Building is not owned by the district and the town does not agree to transfer to the district so that the school be, can be transferred to the new union, then it appears that the school building is not part of the union nor union decisions. So right here he's saying that you know, if it's not transferred, and to me he's saying transferred is here's a dollar you know, we'll, we'll, we'll buy the school from you, you know, and it, he mentions that a lease is not tenable in this email, and I can s send it out to everyone again, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's just, they're of the opinion, they, at least Sean Tui, is that a lease is just not going to work. But it, but it could, oh, possibly, could. possibly, yeah. I mean, it's it just maybe different, different lawyers with different opinions. Yes, but and it also, and it also could be, it could be specified in amended articles. There could be no uncertainty about it if those articles are amended. Well, and the yeah, fact so that there we, are, we may have two, we yeah, may have two paths. The fact that you know Norman mentioned that there are precedents set mm. with other mergers, other school districts that are using a lease, <clears throat> and that's worth something too mm -hmm. um, for our situation. I think. So there was some discussion okay. about having a, a, a joint committee, a committee to work on the mm -hmm. final yeah, points of this. We should try to get that established. Uh, my recommendation was, uh, well, two members of the school board, two members of the select board, whoever, or however you want to do it. <coughs> Just so you can have a smaller group that can actually meet mm -hmm. off schedule and really hone in on the details of like the budget. So. I'd like to be part of that, too. Yeah. Well, you, you would be well. Thank you. <laughs> so... So if you're having, you know, two members of the select board, then you would have to warn the meeting. Because oh, it's yes. a quorum. So, however, we do have a almost former select board meeting who has been very involved with this, who could come with one other select board meeting, That's select true. board member, and then we wouldn't have to warn him. That's true. If he was willing to continue, which I am sure he would be <laughs> at this point. <laughs> running this year. For yeah. <laughs> So, well, I don't know. I don't see it as a problem to warn the meeting. I don't think you're going to have a big right. crowd show up for right. those meetings. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you do have to warn them. But well, no one would show up. Hey, it's a good thing if people show up. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, less likely to make a mistake and they never make a mistake.
Pardon me. If, if that but makes to sense to you, we'll question, bring it up at tomorrow night's yeah. meeting and, and <coughs> decide what two members might want mm -hmm. to represent us. Mm -hmm. Are these are these meetings to what? to to work on the that, lease? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Make sure that all the conditions of the like lease okay. about the budget or about where we draw the mm -hmm. line on capital versus maintenance and okay. all those things mm -hmm. are owned down by people who know what they're yeah. talking about. Because okay. we're fortunate in the fact that our town treasurer is also the school treasurer. Yes. So she has access to, you know, every nickel that's spent. So she can. She's also on the library committee. She is. Oh my so gosh. Yeah, she's a busy woman. Right. I mean, Randy would be an important person to have come to that. Right. That'd be mm -hmm. fine. That yeah. would be sounds fine. like we're kind of yeah. forming a committee. So that's six <laughs> people right there. Um, I think that's enough to get get us a product that we could then look at as as a body. Show. Right. But in the interim, we should also give our attorneys a heads up that this is going to happen. Yeah. 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 Let them draft it up. Let us review the substance, give it back to them, let them refine the language to meet what we're interested in, and we should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, literally, I, it shouldn't take more than a month. It should not. If we get right on it Wednesday morning, and talk to our attorneys. <laughs> Have you talked to Paul a little bit about it yet? Or? The last time I talked to Paul, I sent him Sean Tui's missive, mm -hmm. and uh, he was just not disgusted. He was just, well, it's his opinion. Right. So We have dueling opinions at this point. Right, so I'm sure the school board's attorney will have his opinion as well, and I think they'll be more in line with Paul Gilley's opinion than Mr. Tui's opinion. Yeah. All right, what's next time? Uh, we town. talked about. We've sort of been talking about it. Yeah, we talked about the lease, town owned, and school building to the new forming district. Talked about that briefly, and hopefully that'll work. I want it to work. Because mm -hmm. it would be so much cleaner, mm -hmm. and the school could stay open. Yes. And, yes. You know, yeah. We talked yeah. about the community library MOU, whether or not to incorporate it by reference. Yeah. And we'll have the attorneys hash that out. School board budget, you guys are going to talk about that tomorrow night? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Roof replacement. So, yeah. RFP. So I, I received a copy of the roof replacement RFP and I read through it. And it was definitely skewed to those contractors who specialize in metal roofing. It was just blatant the way it was skewed. So I made some changes on onto it. Larry Eldred and I are meeting tomorrow oh, good. to go over the rest of the document. He has agreed to be the contact person for the project. And I'm hoping to get the RFP out of here by the end of the week. Wow. Yeah. Because you know the you know the uh, uh, terms and conditions are just boilerplate. I ran that by Brandy, in terms of insurance requirements, and once I have Larry's edits to it, I'll turn that around, send it quickly to Paul Gillies, and make sure you know we're not going to go to jail, and get that out on the street. That would be super. I would just comment that a, uh, whatever Larry Eldred says is okay with me. Uh, we are not going to second guess him. Uh -huh. We talked to him quite a bit last year when we were trying to get that done. Larry knows that building better than anybody. I would even suggest if there's some way to make Larry the clerk of the works on whatever happens. He, he, he's agreed to do he's that. Agreed to do I that. think that's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Because, we'll get a good product. Yeah, he was a little upset, I shouldn't say upset, but he was concerned that he was bypassed by the, last year. Last year. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't want to listen to him at all. Yeah. And it was like, what do you mean? You, you've been here you know, forever. Mm -hmm. And why they wouldn't take his advice is just, well, I know why they wouldn't. Reading the RFP, it was pretty evident why they didn't want to take his advice. It was a very flawed process. We all agreed on that. We weren't mm -hmm. entirely unhappy that it fell through. It didn't it fell through. Because yeah. it was, yeah. So anyway, this is great. That sounds, mm -hmm. that sounds very good to, uh, to me, anyway. And we, we'll talk about it again t tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. The only hang-up would be, naturally, the, uh, the cost of it and funding, if there's enough of the reserve fund. I didn't see what rock looping, what their response was last year. I get, apparently, they were the only vendor 
yes. contractor to respond. Yeah. And they did not respond with a metal roof, fortunately. No. No. So, um, it was roughly 150. I, I can't remember. All we got was an, uh, we got an, uh, what, do, what would you call it, an early estimate or something. We didn't get an actual bid, obviously, because oh, okay. we never put the RFP out. Oh, I didn't so know we that. got an early estimate that was, oh. it wasn't 150 on the nose. It was less than that, actually. It was more like 137 or something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But um, they, uh, they, they led us to believe that the, that the delay was okay with them, they'd be willing to bid again yeah. when we reissued it. So I'm hoping that's true. Um, but you're right, the problem is we don't have all the money. We have a good chunk of money. I, the last email I saw was that there was uh, some kind of an agreement between Brandy and the OSSU on how much money was in the yeah, account. Yeah, I think that's and right. And I, the don't, I don't even want to speculate with okay. the numbers in front of me. But the superintendent at, at the meeting we were at together was pretty optimistic that, you know, she could come up with a process to make sure that that was available for this. So She doesn't have to do that. We have the process to do that. Okay, good. Good. Great. Excellent. But you're, it's yeah. Called, it's called our treasurer. <laughs> you mean our treasure? Your treasure. <laughs> yeah. The library's treasure. Everybody's treasure. If she ever decides to move, we're in <laughs> trouble. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. Good to hear. Yeah. And once it's ready to go, I'll send it around to everyone. Or for folks who want to see so it. So you carved out all that stuff about the, the metal roof and all that? Yeah, it's basically an asphalt roof at this point. Yeah, and there's also a stipulation in there since we found that it is a historic, historic, yes, historic building. Here's the RFP here. If you want to go through the 36 pages, it says the Woodbury Graded School is individually listed on the National Register of Historic Places. All work in this building must comply with the Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation. That might scare folks off. Standards are guidelines, and key word there is guidelines, are guidelines, for treatment of historic buildings, and are available online at, so I gave them the URL to look at that. So. But I think that by virtue of the fact that the school has had roof work done over the past, you know, I've, I've been, I first went on the school board about 30 years ago. Um, and we've done asphalt shingling on that roof for years. Yeah. Um, so I have to believe it's okay to keep doing asphalt shingling yeah, on it. Yeah, it's preferred. Well, That's well, preferred. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Some sort of architectural shingle. Yeah. And we, excuse me, get to decide the color. Whether it be gray or black. Gray or green. Gray or green. That's right. Gray or green. <laughs> 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 it's for green now, isn't it? I'm going for gray. Yeah. Even though green would hide all the moss green or the algae that grows on it. <laughs> well, Maybe she'll let your roof pick now. The color. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let the kids pick the color. That might be a good exercise. Yeah. Anyway. And by the way, Patrick, we did get some uh, have some conversations with Mary Jo. Uh -huh. Alan, yes. Who gave us some good, good free advice. Good free advice. Yeah. Good. And that's incorporated in the RFP as well. Excellent. Glad to hear. Moving along. Excellent. We are. I hate to have things languish. Hey, did you know, I'm just going to say for the record, were you aware of the, how highly rated that school is for energy efficiency? I was aware of it. Yeah. Because yeah. of Norm. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Let the record reflect that mm -hmm. thanks to Norm, that school, as old as it is and as funky as it can be yeah. is very highly ranked for efficiency. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, actually, You're getting a good school, you guys. <laughs> We've always had it. Oh, I didn't know it. Keeping a great school. <laughs> I, I should clarify part of that point, which is that Diana had a big role to play in getting some of the grant money that improved the energy efficiency of that building. You know, he always ropes me into things. <laughs> well, she was mean to me. Diana, go work this grant. <laughs> you broke you into seeking a grant to replace the roof? No. 
So Norm, is it is it correct that Woodbury is within the top one percent nationally? Two percent. Top two percent nationally for energy efficiency. Uh, based on energy star score. Yeah. Yeah. That's outstanding. Is that before yes. or after yeah. they converted to pellets? Uh, it was before, and actually converting to pellets would only go the other way with that, because yeah. it's not recognized in, any, in the way they calculate that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, an you? ancient building. Wow. Yeah. That's why we got to get that roof fixed so all that mm -hmm. of <laughs> cellulose up there doesn't get wet. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it is cellulose and not vermiculite. It is. It's not vermiculite. Yeah. Right. We don't even want to go there. Yeah. All right, and lastly... Town meeting, school discussion, straw poll. I think we talked about that. Well, when you say straw poll, uh, you want there's. I think there's several kind of questions to put before the, the is, townspeople. Yeah, I think we need to figure out what we want to ask. Um, to, and what kind of you know? There's the part about the the lease or just the the conveyance of the wetland land or you know do we are the people in town care that we want to try to keep the school running for one well, that's thing that's the first question yeah right? it's the first question and then you know how invested are people in having you know the, the lease that we're going to have together or would people feel okay with us doing the conveyance without the lease you know those those are different the, just the different scenarios of how the school is going to pass from yeah from the Woodbury School District to the Union District, it would be great to figure out what those questions are yeah. and ask them and then just get a show of hands to know how people in town, you know, to guide the select board, the school district, and, and well, how we're going to I proceed. I give that some thought, Michael, and okay. I bring some ideas for questions. Frame those questions up for uh, uh, pre-town meetings.